Hi, it's Sunday, the 3rd of November, um, and we're here to look at the astrology after the Scorpio new moon, um, life after the Scorpio new moon. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is, well, first of all, tell you that there are a number of glimmers here, a number of uh, planetary aspects and things happening in the sky above our heads, which indicate a kickstart. And so what I wanted to do, uh, and I don't usually do a video on a Sunday, but I thought, no, this is uh, this is an occasion. Let's uh, let's let's have a look at this. And uh, so I'll just share with the chart and then we can appreciate what's going on. Right. OK, so. Um, the first thing to look at, I think, is the Jupiter Venus opposition. Right. I think that's an important one. It's pretty much exact. Well, it is exact. 2016, 2016. So it is exact. If Venus is about that, that we find attractive, um, then Venus is telling us what Venus finds attractive right now. So the zodiac sign that Venus is in, which is Sagittarius, is all about teaching. Um, it's also about questing. So learning by broadening horizons, moving forward and uh, being attracted to new, exciting um, opportunities, exploration, adventure, that kind of thing. Now, we've got a double up here because Venus is opposite to Jupiter. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Um, and so we've got a, a double up on the meaning. This is all really just reinforcing the fact that it's about teaching and it's about learning and it's about looking forward and it's about exploring. So that by itself really would would tell me um, to get up and go, would invite me to think about, wow, there's loads of things to, to search out now, to seek, to explore. But we've got some more stuff going on also. Um, here we've got the moon has moved out of Scorpio. And while it was in Scorpio, we were very much in feminine energy. I mean, really, really embroiled in feminine energy. Um, of course, this is all in the approach to the American election, which I'm not going to comment on. But um, if it, it was it was about the feminine. And I'm wondering if that has helped one of the candidates in particular. I <laughs> said so people make their decision. But anyway, the moon is in Sagittarius and Mercury is in Sagittarius. Um, and so these are just adding weight to this masculine questing uh, adventurous energy. And we have uh, Pallas Athena herself in there, um, very much about feminine intelligence, about learning, about um, exploring, about protecting, certainly, um, uh, and, and very adventurous. So I think this is the time to lift our eyes. Now, there is something about <clears throat> being down in the valley where we're looking down and we're contemplating and we're, we're drawing things in and becoming very inward looking. But there comes a time when we have to remember to open our eyes and look up. Um, and and so it's a metaphor as well as an action. It's about time to open the eyes and look up because the sky is indicating it that way. But there's more. It's not just uh, what I've spoken about so far. Um, there is more here. So let's just cover that as well. <clears throat> the sun is in a, a particular position. Um, which means, and you can see this from this table here, there is only one squiggle in these boxes, which means the sun is aspectless apart from one aspect, which is a trine to Saturn. And it's very close and it's applying. So this is an urgent type of thing. It's It's like this is astrology at its height, wanting to tell you right now. And so Sun trine Saturn, it happens in water. 
but it's about solidifying or making concrete the things that the water has learnt. And this is very important. Whatever you have gleaned probably isn't even in your conscience or consciousness, sorry, isn't even in your consciousness yet. You're probably sort of still shaking your head from the effect of that feminine energy of pulling in and feeling disquiet at least, if not a depression or if not um, moments of doubt. However, it was also a time for some very um, good for us learning. It was a time to listen to the soul and very few times are available to listen to the soul because the mind and the spirit are always uh, you know, grabbing our attention. So we, we did some soul work in the last couple of days. This is saying that that soul work can now be grounded. Um, so another really good aspect for us to take um, hope from, really. Um, and I'm just looking at uh, the other one here, which is to do with Mars and Pluto. Um, there we go. So we've got um, Pluto there, Mars there, pretty much exact. And I think they are square to Juno. Yes, they are. Now, this isn't going to, this will have by now got pretty invisible. Um, it's It's gone into its, so far into its depth, um, into its invisible, invisible um, uh, energy um, that, it's not highly accessible at the moment. We've probably enjoyed the run-up to that one more than um, this moment. Um, it's just past exactness, but at this point, it, it's like a high tide. So in a high tide, you get all that action as the water comes into the harbour and you get all that movement and everything. And then when you get that high tide, there is something called slack water and the water goes quiet. Now, what's happening to the water is the moon's influence, which is at the back of the tides or be, uh, behind all the tides. The influence has pulled the water in, scooped it up. There's been all of that action. And then there is a point at which the position of the moon and the water itself and the weight of the water now has to change. And so there's a, a, a slack water period where it's almost still, nothing's happening until it starts the withdrawal. And it's that point you're, you're filling up, you know, the energy is there again. So it's the energy that takes it in, holds it. There's a, there's a slack water time and then energy is coming out again. OK, <clears throat> what's important about this is this is probably where we are with the Mars Pluto um, and the square to Juno. It, the, the prob all the effects, it probably has happened. It's now it's a, a time of culmination, a time of waiting. Now. We know because of the fire in the chart and because of Sagittarius that this is a moment of teaching, of learning, of questing, of searching. So we've got all that in the chart, but also we've got the Mars-Pluto effect telling us about now we wait, it's on slack water. So both are there. So it's a matter of keeping hold of what you have learnt whatever the impetus has been whatever the movement has been about it, no matter how quiet it's been even if it's been a movement to just do nothing hold that moment from that moment there is a door opening Sagittarius is opening a door and it's about how turning towards that door you can see the light more than that, you can see the light, but you can see the purpose of the light, the reason behind the light. You can see the, um, you can understand 
the purpose and the reasoning. So it's a real moment of of opportunity. It's it's filled with fecundity. It's like the the buds in the spring just before they burst out to become flowers. Um, it's like the garden in in May in the UK or in Europe where it's it's bursting out. Well, we're not at the bursting yet. We're at the pre-bursting. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like um, the, the, the animals that are pregnant, you know, they're, they're about to produce their young. It's not, they haven't yet produced them, but it's we're there. So it's about how it's almost about to change. Um, so I think what we need to do is in your own special way, think about how that is affecting you. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think there's um, a lot there for, for us to um, consider um, and work with. I think that's the main thing. Now, I'm just looking down just to see if there's anything else that I've got here, um, which I haven't mentioned. No, the rest of the stuff is for tomorrow's video. Okay, I hope that was useful. I enjoyed doing it. It's lovely to talk to you on this Sunday afternoon. And I am now going to uh, stop recording and say goodbye. Goodbye.